This is part one in a series of videos that will guide you through the setup of a Cisco Call Manager Express system for home or lab use. I should mention I am no professional and have learnt Cisco's Call Manager Express for my own home VoIP as Asterix wasn't amazing in my opinion. It, I just didn't like it, okay? In part one we are going to go over the hardware choices I have made and some of the choices you should make for your own system. So let's start with what you need. You need some phones, preferably Cisco 7900s, but you can also do the Cisco 8900s as well if you want something a bit more flash. You're going to need a switch which is PoE and managed like a Cisco 3560 or my favourite switch like for this sort of setup, HP 2520. Um, they're both pretty cheap on the used market, you don't need to worry about gigabit or anything, just make sure you're getting the PoE model um, for the 3560 because it does come in non-PoE models. And you're also going to want a Cisco 2800 router with 512 megs of RAM and at least 256 megs of flash. Um, both of them are quite easy to upgrade so don't worry too much about that. So back to the phones, the 7900 is your best bet, they're super popular so you have literally truckloads of them to pick up on the used market. But there are a few of the 7900s that you should avoid at all costs like the 7940 and 7960. Now these phones are borderline ancient being 14 years old, these phones as such suffer from many issues. They have no busy lamp field indicators, they're just grey buttons, which means you cannot see if a line is in use, you cannot see if someone's on the phone, you can't see if someone's in do not disturb, you can't see anything. It is really annoying. After you've used a phone with busy lamp field, you will basically not be able to use one without it. They're half duplex, which means that if that someone is talking and you talk, you can't hear them at the same time. Only one person can talk at the same time so that could cause issues and it has caused issues for me so probably not a good phone to pick um, they also have quite a bit of hiss in the background i found um, they do not support custom ringtones or wallpapers very well um, yeah they just don't i couldn't get it to work with custom ringtones and there's no option for wallpapers and they're not standard power of ethernet so you have to use an older cisco switch like a 3550 and if they are incredibly ancient and you're going to have issues with some of the later phones like the 7970 which will just refuse to power up. So ideally you're going to want to go for a Cisco 7941, 7961, 7942 or 7962 for like a basic phone. They're all grayscale screens but they're all recent models so they are standard power of Ethernet and stuff. Or if you want something a bit more stylish you can go for the 7970, 7971, 7945, 7965, 7975. Oh, so many models, but they are the colour backlit screen, touchscreen, malarkey models. They're quite good phones. I've got two of the 7975s, love them. I had a 7971 before the backlight broke, loved it. And I have a 7970, awesome phone. So they're kind of the phones that I would 100% recommend everyone tries to get. Um, they, the 7970 especially can be picked up super cheap. If you want something wireless, there is also the 7921. It's quite easy to set up and it's wireless. It uses Wi-Fi. Um, it works best with Cisco Wi-Fi gear, which is what I have at home, but it will work with non-Cisco gear, just you might have issues with roaming. You could also pick up some of these 7906 or 7911 phones. These are just one-line phones. They're great for areas where you might not have a lot of foot traffic and you just want a phone. Um, they do lack speakerphone though, so bear that in mind. I have five of these phones personally, but they have been quite a bit of a pain in terms of firmware. A lot of them just seem to get stuck with blank screens until you press enough buttons and it starts to work really weird. Now pick up as many phones as you want, but remember that each model router has a maximum. I think the 2801 has 25 max phones or something called a 2811 maybe. I know the 2821, which is what I'm using for my own VoIP system, has a max of 50 phones, which both of them numbers is crazy for home use. I've got, I have five phones max on my system. So moving on to the routers, you're going to want to buy a Cisco 2800. 
they're older but that means that they're a lot cheaper and more importantly you won't face any issues with licensing as it's based on the honor system so you can just say yeah I've got licenses for 50 phones and Cisco couldn't care less because it's old gear it's not supported and at the end of the day you're learning how to use their system so you're more likely to buy their actual system Probably not for home use though because it's quite expensive. I've seen a lot of people who just go out and they buy like a Cisco 2900 and then they spend a good month sitting there figuring out why they can't do it and then they figure out it's licensing and oh boy that's an issue. I'm using a Cisco 2821 for my actual home system but I'm going to be doing this entire video with a Cisco 2801 which I bought specifically for this because I don't want to mess up my own config here. Aim for a 2811 or 2821 as they offer more extensions than the 2801 and they're also sort of the two most popular models so you pick them up quite cheap. Remember these are going to be quite loud out of the box. The 2821 can easily be modded to be dead silent. I took out three fans, put in a single Arctic F8. I can't even hear it. I don't even think it's on half the time. And the temperatures are really good, so do that if you need to. Whatever router you buy, you're going to need to upgrade it because you want to run the latest iOS, which requires 512 megs of RAM and 256 megs or a larger compact flash card. The RAM is standard DDR1 and most come with 256 megs out of the box. So yeah, you when you're buying one of these routers, just inquire with the seller, ask them how big is the compact flash and how big is the RAM. Um, a competent seller who knows what they're selling will be able to do it. It's a simple one line command which tells them both of these details and the compact flash card you can just take that out the front of the router to see how big it is. It's not the end of the world if you get a good deal on a router which has not got 512 megs of RAM and a 256 meg card because they can both be upgraded quite easily. And finally switches, you're going to want a managed switch with PoE. Avoid older switches like the Cisco 3550 as these will not power most of the Cisco phones due to being what I'm going to call rubbish PoE. They're old for a reason, they do not support standard power over Ethernet, so you're only going to be able to power the 7960 phones basically. A Cisco 3560 24PS is a good option. The HP 2520, as I've already mentioned, is another good option, but I'm going to be using a Cisco 3560 24PS as it is quite a bit more common to find on the used market. It's cheaper and it kind of matches the rest of the system. So that's kind of it for the sort of hardware you're going to pick. Now, what I have missed off here is um, modules for the router. Now, there is a lot you can get for your router. You can get the PVDM modules. These basically add codecs to the router which let you do some cool things. You don't need them, you just don't. I haven't found a need for them. It might help if you want to do some high quality calls between two 7970s, you might need PVDM modules for that. Or if you're doing some crazy setup, you might need it, but for basic home VoIP with SIP trunks, you don't need a PVDM module. As for the interface cards, I do not have any FXO or FXS cards because I'm not integrating with analog phones or analog phone lines in my setup. But I will be picking up two of them just so I can explain how to set it up because I know some home people will want to have an analog phone line plugged in. And I am not using a Cisco Unity Express module because A, they're expensive, B, they're kind of a liability because they started. Um, with no licensing up to version 7 you didn't have to license it which is fantastic but you have to run iOS 12 for that to work and the module once upgraded to 7.1 or higher you cannot downgrade it and you need a license file from Cisco and no eBay seller seems to be able to tell me if it's a licensed product or not and licensing I found some prices it was about £700 so we're going to ignore the Unity Express I'm going to do voicemail with asterisks, which not ideal. I'd love to have a Unity Express, but Cisco are really, they're, they're dicks. That's the only way to put it. They are dicks. Stupid licensing. Anyway, that's it for this video. I will see you in part two, where we will actually go over setting up the equipment, mainly the router, and making sure it's all set up for us to start doing call manager so that's going to be making sure we're running the correct version of IRS make sure we've got IPs and stuff set correctly make sure our network switch has got the VLAN set up properly because we're going to be doing VLANs with this setup 
so take the opportunity between now and part two to look up some videos about VLANs. There's a really good one which I will link in the description and in the YouTube cards which explains VLANs quite well and that's basically what we're going to do. We're going to have a VLAN that's just a normal network and we're going to have a VLAN for the VoIP network so that the two do not mix and that's just going to make our lives so much easier. Anyway, see you in part two.